And the first thing uh, is uh, the first sentence we'll read that. And then once I read that first sentence, I'm going to go to Philippians chapter 4, uh, verse 6 through 8. And the first sentence reads, Stewardship affects all of one life and how one makes decisions. When you're a stewardship, it didn't say it only affects a uh, part of it, but it said it affects all of your life. Amen. Wow. So if you're going to be a great steward of a, uh, anything, everything around your life is uh, going to have to conform or change to make sure the thing that you're stewarding is the most important thing. So if you're a steward of your time, you are digitally managing your time to the point that you are not overdoing this, overdoing that, over strategizing. Or if you are a steward, such as we talk about finance, that you are purposely in writing out and planning out how you're going to do your, and making sure you have your, your time, your 10% before you do anything else. Amen. And the first scripture we gonna uh, said we're going to go to was Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 8, and it reads, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made unto God, and the peace of God that will surpass us all understanding shall keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. And, no, and verse number eight, it reads, Finally, brother, so whatever thing are true, whatsoever thing are honest, so whatever thing are just, so whatever thing is pure, so whatever thing is lovely, so whatever thing is good, report. If you be vigilant, and if these and if and if there be any praise, think on these things. This scripture here is very key when you come to stewardship. Because they say the first part of the first description, first thing we should do is by prayer. By asking God for wisdom for insight, how to be a good steward of our finances. That's good. We might have a great strategy that we've seen from our grandparents, forefathers, and now with the internet, man, you can just type in how to be wealthy, how to be a good steward. And you will come up with so many different ideals, so many different strategies, but that is man's strategy. Each one of our plan, each one of our own stewardship is totally different for the next person. Even husband and wife. The husband's strategy, stewardship, might be this plan, this way, that way with his finance, and God may be leading you this way. And then sometimes God will change a season and have you do a different thing with your, with your, with your um, being a good stewardship. One time he may have you given to the needy. Then there might be a season where God may be having you to store up for yourself because there's a rainy, there's going to be a drought, maybe a famine in your life. It might be an injury, a sickness, or whatever it may be. So it's so important that we do what the scripture said. By everything, by prayer and supplication and giving thanks to God. And when God speaks to you, he will give you um, the peace that surpasses all understanding that you may be go through the process knowing that this here would make no heavenly sense. I mean, no earthly sense because God has told me to go over here and pay these people rent for the next two months. It may be 700 maybe 1500 but whatever it is, God has put you in a predicament and gave you the ability to do it because he's the rewarder. Amen? Amen. And, on the, um, and then, um, then just the, um, the part that really stuck out to me in verse 8, uh, just talking about um, things that are honest, things are just. Pure and lovely and good. And as a stewardship, most times dealing with money, we be thinking about just us and what we can look like, yeah. how we can be glorified in the earthly realm. But when you start thinking about things that's pure, things are good, things that's just, it takes self completely out of it. Amen. 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 Anybody have anything to say before I go on to my next point? Uh, so the next part here, uh, it reads, the wisdom writer said, as a person think in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. In Proverbs 23, 7. And um, if you read that, uh, for time's sake, I ain't going to go there. But if you read that particular text, it's talking about the evil heart give out evil things. Mm -hmm. But a good heart give out good things. That's good. So that's why I was thinking it was so important that we learn in Philippians chapter 4, how to go to God. So we'll have a good heart. But a lot of times, we be thinking, well, God, I should have this by now. Mm -hmm. 
I, it ain't fair that I got to work this hard for mine. Mm. And this person here have this skill, this ability. I want that to be able to make their type of money. But don't worry about what the type of money you're making. At this point in season, God is trying to teach us a lot of time, be a good steward of what you have now. That's good. How can you be increased? How can you be blessed to go on to the next level where you're making fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars $2,000 a week when you now making 500 a week and you broke a day late? It's a personal, individual thing, and it is tough. Because there are some habits. I mean, one time, every week when I got paid, I don't know how I came up with this. I went to Big Lots. It feels like I'm going to spend $50 a week at Big Lots buying me something. Right. And one day I'm like, why is I buying all this um, juice and just buying this random stuff? But it was through the spirit that God said, you know what, boy, you are addicted to Big Lots. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. I have not been to Big Lots in about five or six years. Was it a sin? No. But was it being a good stewardship? No. Because most times I would buy stuff that wasn't good for my temple. Amen. Yeah, amen. I would buy just junk food and just random stuff <laughs> and just on and on. Right. But that 50 bucks was not causing me sin, but it was not what God had called me to do. So, um, but uh, that good heart, when a person have a good heart, they can give you something with a generous spirit and they truly mean it. And, they, and you know it is gen Y because this person going up, over, beyond, getting up out of their bed, willing to take me to work, pick me up, willing to loan me a car, willing to do things that imaginable. You can, a lot of times you can say only God, but that evil heart, that, that angry heart, frustrated heart, that when you do things for God or, or for the people of God or individual you are helping, you do it from a bad spot. And a lot of times, people that's connected to the spirit say, you know, they're doing it, but their heart is not in it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, it's written all over your face and your attitude, your language, and you feel frustrated, so short temple. So when you have that good heart, you're able to endure and go into the trenches and do the will of God with a smile. You're able to do it over and over and timely and be patient and kind. It's like sometimes um, dealing with, 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 with my little ones, my kids. Uh, I, you know, um, I just feel like they rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know if they're getting together so long, or I love them so much, expect so much out of them, or what the deal is. But a lot of the time, I'm able to deal with other people, kids, I seem like with a lot more grace and mercy and patience than my own, because I, well, I guess one, I feel like I taught them better. Yeah. Why are you here in this situation? Why are you even thinking this way or doing these certain things? But uh, as a believer, we cannot even do that. We got to man up, deny ourselves, and take up our cross daily. And it's saying daily mean every day. It didn't say half the day, not when you choose to do it, but daily throughout the day. But we continue to go back to them scripture and meditate on what is pure, what is just, what is holy, and what of God. And we're able to be able to walk through that. Amen? Amen, Walls. And, um... Going down to the next part, according to Jesus, how we perceive money reflects what is in our heart. A lot of times we perceive money, million, thousand, man. I remember more back in the day, I said, boy, if I get $10,000, I'm good. Matter of fact, even over um, Christmas uh, Eve, we were sitting there opening gifts and different things. Um, I went downstairs and got a, a wood wheel. I had like an 84 Cadillac fleet. Uh, Fleetwood Cadillac. I had a, a, the, the grill, the bucket with the woman on the front with the chrome and all that. I used to tell my son, this is the things here I used to really cherish with my cars. Now I drive anything. And pretty much wear a lot of anything a lot of times. But uh, because you learn as a believer, your outer appearance does not make the man who you are on the inside. Even with gifts. Uh, me and my wife, we does gifts, but we really don't do gifts. A lot of times, we uh, from the beginning, we made the thing. I love you for you. Exactly. You can continue to give me bigger and better and this and that. I gotta go get you a car. I gotta get you a fifteen dollar, fifteen thousand dollar ring. But really, the heart. You can give a person don't don't give a dang about it. That's right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, we want to receive tangible things so other people can see. Right on. Yeah. But how we are really being treated at home or how we have really been cared about when we are pain and aching and sick and unable to do, that's the things that we need to do. 
But go back to the, uh, I'm getting off on another one, but according to how we perceive money reflect our heart. A lot of times we call people blessed because they have money. Or they must be this, or they, they, they are this and that. But God gives talents to people without repentance, meaning that he will bless a person that's not even saved, the ability right. to create Microsoft, that's right. to create Amazon. But even though God gave them that ability, God is still working on them and allowing them to do the thing. He would even use sometimes the wicked to bless the righteous. The scripture said. All right. So God will put people in place and allow people to be successful, even not connected. But we a lot of times think, oh man, you know, uh, they got a mega church. I got to be there. Or they got this, they got that. Or this corporation. But a lot of times God will put you in a place that, that look poor because... Uh, favor is a mug. Yeah. What I mean about that is you take a little bit, but with God, favor, God will put you in the connection with the right people that will allow you to be able to get things done that sometimes money won't won't buy. Come on, that's it. Just imagine a couple of uh, last year about this uh, the winter when we had power outage. Yeah. Man, you can have all the money you want. <laughs> when your power went out, you mm -hmm. cannot pay nobody to fix your power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I needed a generator. I went to Home Depot. I went to Lowe's. I went to Ace Hardware. I looked everywhere. The Google, Internet, Facebook. You could not find no propane tanks. You couldn't find no generators. So what is money at that point in time? Right. You could have millions, billions. Wouldn't have paid triple for the certain item that you wanted. But once again, if you didn't, the, you, you, with all the money, with all the resources to purchase it, but you didn't have the product, you couldn't get it. Yeah. So how you perceive money is is a, is a, is a, is a big outlet, and a lot of times we let that that drive us to make life changing decisions in our life. Yeah. We will leave the person that love us. Mm. We'll leave our families. We'll leave our churches. We'll leave anything just for that money. And on uh, one description, um, that was Proverbs chapter. Um, um, 3 and verse 7. I want to go to Proverbs chapter 3 um, verse uh, Proverbs 23 verse 4. And it's talk and it reads and this here was for me. Mm -hmm. Labor not to be rich. Mm -hmm. Cease from your own wisdom. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times uh I've been in the past that I've learned to work hard for what you want and earn it. Even from back in the old days when I was in the game, I remember on first and first the 15th of the month, we used to hustle 24-7 because we knew it was money in the streets. So the 31st, all the way to the 3rd, we stayed up for three or four days just running the block, getting our money. Man, you know what? I made me 15 stacks, man. I'm good. Then come to 15 again, we do the same thing. Then I took, I got saved, delivered, not doing that thing. I took that same mentality into my Christian walk. Yeah. Where I want to work seven days a week, 10 hours a day, thinking, man, I'm going to get this money. I'm going to make wealth in my own strength. But let me tell you, you can get that money, but it won't last. Or you'll wear yourself out and you won't last. Yeah. Something ain't going to last. Mm. <laughs> so he... To my, this is scripture for me and whoever else that's out there that thinking that you can work and earn and work and earn, you baby get in your own strength, you can't. That's good. So you gotta have a balance. And being a good stewardship, you can take less and do a lot more with it than you can do when you just working, working, working. That's good. Amen. Amen. Um, and the next part I read, I'm gonna read it again. Uh, uh, the one scripture, according to Jesus, how we perceive money reflect what is our heart. He has taught us a good man out of his good good treasure of his heart bring forth what is good. Out of his mouth that speaketh from that which is filled. Luke chapter 6 verse 45. Next paragraph is start on it read as. So prepare the number of obstacles to fulfill stewardship is a negative attitude. Um, likewise, the fundamental um, promise, um, premise 
that undergird stewardship is proper ownership. Amen. A lot of times we look at uh, we own everything, but we're gonna read right here. A good store, a good steward recognizes that God is the owner, yeah. and the steward is a servant. God is the source, and the giver is the root in Him. Amen. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times we look at our house, or our cars, our clothes. Man, we own this here, mm -hmm. but uh, really and truly, uh, we don't own anything. That's right, brother. Uh, from the time you are born, that dash to the time you die. Uh, I know we have heard it many times. Yeah, I've never seen a house, a car, or nothing being told behind the hearse, or a hole big enough that they put all that stuff in there. <laughs> Only person that did was the Egyptian king took them. They would give him gold, everything, but everything he had, he couldn't take with him. That's right. So it's so important that we learn that God is the owner. We are the steward. We possess it. Because we have it. We can enjoy it. Is that not a sin? If God told you to go get that $600,000 house or $400,000 house, go get it. Because he was a faithful one to be able to make you provide, but you got to make sure it's God and not you. If God is telling you to stay in that you know, $100,000 house, like me, stay in that $100,000 house. Yeah. But the heart, and we're going to see later on, I got some more scripture about contentment. Amen? Yeah. Anybody have anything to say before I Going on to the last part. Uh, the last paragraph here. It said tithe is in, indispensable to the Christian discipleship. And another word this scripture could read. I mean this sentence could read. Tithe is absolutely necessary to the uh, dedicated follower of Jesus Christ. If you is a dedicated follower of Jesus Christ. Um, tithe is just part of your life. Come it's on, like man. prayer. It's like reading the Bible. It's like having faith. Because we know that everything God gives, he gives us a portion to give back to him, and he will continue to bless us continually more and more. And uh, it's given because um, the storehouse needs it. In order to have a church, you're going to have overhead of some type. A lot of times, I first got saved and or growing up, I thought churches was exempt for everything. But no, churches have lights, they have water, they have maintenance, they have everything that you have in your own house. Amen. And the next um, sentence read: There is a definite relationship between obedience and discipleship. Amen. Um, obedience and discipleship, they go hand in hand. It's hard to be a good disciple of anything or a follower of anybody if you ain't going to be obedient. Amen. Obedient means you will willing to submit to the rules, the regulations of it. Uh, if you're part of a sorority, um, guess what? You're going to submit to the rules. Yeah. If you're part of a, 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 a secret service working for the, um, the, like the FBI, they got certain rules and regulations that you can have to submit under. That's the same thing with the kingdom of God. There are certain rules that we're going to submit under to be that good disciple. Obedience, a lot of time, as adults, we do not want to hear that word. We think we are too grown. We know too much. I put my own shoes on, pull my own pants up. Talk about so how I need to be obedient to, to, to anybody. Sometimes even to God. Even to the shepherd of God that's over the house. Talk about but God has called us to be servants, amen? amen. Not slaves, but servants. Yeah. Mean that you are willing to submit and give unto God and live and submit under the man of God that with the vision and the dream that he had. And the reward of that is that when God starts blessing, you in the midst of it. Amen. It doesn't mean it's going to be your personal, no. But it could be that God even blessed it like with the building here. Well, you are a part of it that you gave and you sub you submitted, you was obedient, and you served and did your part. So ultimately, overall, that when the rewards come down, they come down from the top to the bottom, and you are connected to it. What a blessing is that. Mm. But when we don't have the steward part or the treasure heart, we look at independent. What do I have? Mm -hmm. It's my name on top. Mm -hmm. Then when we start getting in trouble with God, 
and we start getting in trouble with individuals because we will get into self and start picking altercations. Amen. Amen. And um, the next part it said, what standard did he? Um, it, um, the next part is a question. How did Jesus determine who his disciples were? Amen. Then the second part, what standard did he use? A lot of times, like again, I was just saying we want to use our earthly wisdom, our earthly insight. But the, um, the, um, the scriptures say that, uh, tell us before he, before God called his apostle, his disciple, he constant prayed to the Father for, uh, in, in, for, for inspiration in the matter of who he shall call and what order should they be called in. If God came down in the heavenly, uh, hell, in the earthly flesh and still had to pray to the Father for insight on who he should, who should, who he should call mm. to be his disciples. And we on this earth been down here for 30 years, 40 years, 60 years, and we are in no way connected to God like the Son was. Amen. So how much more do you think we are able to make certain decisions on our own? So a lot of times we need to stop being in self, mm -hmm. humble ourselves and submit unto the God that when we be able to go to God, like I said in Philippians chapter 4, and with all prayer and supplication to God, to ask God, this is what I need. A lot of times we go to people that we know that is going to send us or direct us in the thing we want. Mm -hmm. uh, that will say, oh yeah, girl, go get that. Yeah, we're going to buy that. It's your season. And just, no, they're just haters. But we all really need some accountability partners. I had a couple and uh, kind of strayed away from all the years. But through this lesson, told me, Derek, you know what? You need to go back. Yes, you can go out there and buy them four pair of Jordans or a pair of Jordans. But do you really need them? Accountability partners say, man, don't you got four pair of retros already? Yeah. You got two two reds, a blue and a black. Now you want a green pair? What you got green to go with? And you go, you know what? You're right, man. You're right. I just give them because of this, just because of that status quo of the of the world okay. society. So to, con to uh, conclude, uh, my time here is pretty much just up. Uh, we're going to just read the seed right here. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, it reads, Where your, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen. Where your treasure is, your heart will be there also. That's so important. Because a lot of times, we don't even realize where our treasure is. Uh, and where our heart is until something drastic happened or it been taken away. Because God is a jealous God. He said that we should not put nothing else before him. No man, no woman, no thing. So a lot of times we'll keep pursuing, like back in the days, every car I had is gone. <laughs> every jury I had is gone. The only thing I have is a steering wheel of it and uh, an ottoman out of it. <laughs> so speaking out of experience, you know, it's not worth it. <laughs> so we need to learn to be a good steward of what God has to call us to be over our finances. And uh, there's so much more to this lesson. Um, the planting the seed. I had three more points, but anyway. I'm going to be obedient and wrap it up. And uh, we're going to go ahead and close out with our decoration again. Yeah. Um, could we all uh, please stand? Uh, once again, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. And it reads, All, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It is profitable for all doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. Amen.